I know you may say, I don't know what's down the road, but all you got to know is I've been given the authority that Jesus has shown up in my life and given me the authority that Jesus has given me the power to go in his name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. How many of you know that he won't give up on you? That he'll stick closer than a brother. That he'll be there even until the end. Glory be to our great God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Amen. I know the sun is shining outside. The sun is out outside. Amen. But can't you feel it in your spirit? Can't you feel the sun shining in your spirit? Don't you feel the warmth of the sun all in your spirit this morning? God is a good God. He's been merciful unto us. He's been gracious unto us. He's blessed us with another day. Hallelujah. When you opened your eyes this morning, it just should have let you know that the Lord is still on your side. That God has blessed me one more time. He's put life, health, and strength in my body. You might not feel like you want to feel. Your bones might not act like they need to act. But thanks be to God, you're yet alive. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Glory to God. Amen. 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 Sister Micaiah, right? Amen. God bless you, sister. Amen. Good to see you. Amen. To the people of God, all who have come and gathered in the great name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, as we prepare for our word on today, um, God does some things sometimes that we don't understand. And even as I was preparing for this message, I wasn't sure why, but now I do know why. Amen. So I thank God for the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit and how God orchestrates things. Amen. And I thank God again for us allowing us to celebrate another season Amen. As a ministry. And, uh, and as I thought about that, uh, how God has been keeping and blessing and how God has moved throughout the years and even in the ups and the downs, the ins and the outs, how God has continued to make a way out of no way. Amen. Uh, our scripture text this morning can be found again in Mark, the sixth chapter. And in that sixth chapter of Mark. I want to lift up uh, verses 7 through 9. Mark the 6th chapter, verses 7 through 9. And they read. And he called his 12 disciples together and began sending them out two by two, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits he told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick. No food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. Amen. Today I want to share with you from the subject of when God sends us. When God sends us. Let us pray. Most gracious Father, we thank you for this day. We, we thank you again, God, for your presence and your power. And we ask now, God, that you would overshadow us and use us for your will and for your glory. Use this vessel, O oh God. It's broken, but yielded. It's unworthy, but willing. So, Father, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this privilege. Now stand up on the inside of me and, and preach through me by the power of your Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, that you would open our ears and help us to listen. Open our eyes, for we want to see Jesus. Then open our hearts that we might receive him. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. When God sends us. Reverend Taisha Cutlison will be the introduction to our message today because she is about to be sent. 
She's about to go on a journey that she's never been on before, to do something that she's never done before, to engage in a work that she may be familiar with but has not had the opportunity to fully walk in it. But all of us at some point will be sent by God to do one task or another. Some of us will be sent to share and preach the gospel, the good news to somebody else. Some of us will be sent to put our hands on somebody to help to bring healing into their life by the laying on of hands. Some of us will be sent into the life of someone who is in need to be able to minister to the need that they may have in their life. But all of us at some point will be sent out by God. The question is, are you ready? Most of us will say, yes, I'm ready, and some may say, no, I'm not ready. But the time will come when we all need to be sent. God has equipped us. God has gifted us. God has made it possible for us to be able to go out into the world and to do ministry, to go out into the world and be able to share with someone else about the goodness of the Lord. And I want you to know today, because if it had not been for the Lord on my side, hallelujah, I remember the day that I was sent, hallelujah. I remember the day that I had to go, hallelujah. I remember the day that I thought to myself, are you ready for this? And then I come to the place of telling people all the time, nobody's really ready for it. We may think we are, we may say that we are, but nobody's really ready for it because you're going to run into some stuff that you never prepared for. You're going to run into some stuff that you didn't even think about. You're going to run into some people that you aren't prepared for. You're going to run into some people that you never even thought about. But nonetheless, you've got to be ready to go as much as you possibly can. And when we talk about being sent and we talk about going out in the name of Jesus, we must understand that the true believer is called, authorized, and sent by God to, and entrusted to serve the mission of God. Yes, we have been called, authorized, and sent and entrusted by God to serve the mission of God. And as we look at this text that is in front of us this morning in Mark chapter 6, verses 7 through 9, I want us to see, first of all, that you've been called. Yes, you are called. Amen. And the truth of the matter is all of us are called. We're all called to the gospel ministry of Jesus Christ. I know you may not have a preacher's license. I know you may not have been ordained, but you have been called to the gospel ministry. But not only have you been called to the gospel ministry, you've been called to the ministry, period. To serve one another, to, to bless those who don't have the blessings in their life, to be able to come alongside someone who is struggling and going through. We've all been called to ministry. The question is, will you serve as you've been called? Will you go as you've been called? And when you understand the disciples have been called, it says in that seventh verse, and he called his 12 disciples together and began to send them out two by two. He called them together. Why? Because they have been called to him. Amen. One thing you got to show enough to understand, you've been called to him, not them. Amen. And once you understand you've been called to him and not to the people, your ministry will be a lot better. Challenges will come. Issues may arise, but in the midst of it all, I understand I've been called to him. When trouble shows up, I understand I've been called to him. When people don't act right, I understand I've been called to him. That's one of the things that helps keep you rooted and grounded is understanding who you've been called to. I've been called to serve people, but I've been called by him and to him. And as long as I keep him at the forefront of ministry, as long as I keep him at the forefront of everything I do, yeah, troubles and issues may arise, but I understand who called me. Amen. Now, some people think their grandmama called them. Hallelujah. I pray that grandmama didn't call you because if grandmama called you, you went for a world of trouble. Hallelujah. Because when things get difficult and things get hard, grandmama might not be there to help you. 
Amen. When challenges come and people show up that are cooperative, grandmama might not be there to help you. But you got to understand that I've been called by him to him. And because he's the one who called me, he's the one who made a way out of nowhere. He's the one who showed up in my midnight hour. He's the one that I look to. He's the one that I'm serving because he's the one that called me. So we've been called to him. And, and because we've been called to him, we got to understand that we are not called just to be members of some organization or group. But you've been called to be a part of this great thing called the body of Christ. And everyone that's been called to the body of Christ has been equipped with a gift. And everyone that's been called to the body of Christ has the responsibility of living and sharing the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Don't you know that you've been called to the greatest experience that you could ever have? And that is to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. You've not just been called to be a part of a group or an organization. You've been called to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. That means you've been called to come along and walk beside Jesus. And Jesus will walk beside of you. And then when things get really rough and things get really tough and you feel like there's no one there, you'll feel the presence of his power. And you'll feel him walking with you through your journey. When things get real challenges, you just keep on sensing and you'll find that Jesus is walking with you in the midst of the challenge. That he'll be right there beside you because he said, I'll stick closer than a brother. Amen. Even your brother will let you down sometime. Even your brother might not be there with you. But thanks be to God, Jesus said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you even till the end. I'll walk with you through troubled times. And in fact, he said, when my yoke is easy and my burdens are light, so when things get hard for you, yoke up with me and you can make it through. But we've got to understand that we've been called to this great experience. And it's a threefold experience. And we've been called to salvation and have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You're not just called to anything, but you're called to have a relationship with Christ. You're called to be in communion with God. You're called to be in favor with God. All because he's called us. He called us out of the world. He called us out of the sin. And he called us to salvation and a salvation experience. But he didn't just call us to be saved. But he, he called us to be disciples. To come and to learn the ways of God. To come and to learn the ways of Christ. And as we come and learn the ways of God. And as we come and learn the ways of Christ. He has a way of then grooming us for the work that's yet ahead of us. That's one of the reasons that we've got to become disciples is because he wants us to grow. He wants us to grow in our faith. He wants us to grow in our understanding. And as we grow in our faith and an understanding, God then can use us for his glory. He can use us to glorify his kingdom. He can use us to bring glory to his name because it says in John, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. One of the reasons we've been called to salvation, one of the reasons we've been called to be disciples is so that we can lift up the name of Jesus. And as we lift up the name of Jesus and as we declare his goodness, as we declare who he is, he then sends us out for service. To serve the community, to serve the world. And he sends us out to tell somebody about a good God. And it sends us out to tell them about a good God that can save your soul, a good God that can redeem you, a good God that can teach you and teach you a new way of life, a good God that can send you out for service. Disciple making is supposed to be an ongoing process. We come, we get saved, and we become disciples, and we disciple someone else, and then we help that person to disciple someone else, and the cycle goes on and on and on. And God will soon have a bunch of disciples moving throughout the earth, but we we're challenged when we don't grow. We're challenged when we don't become a disciple of Jesus Christ. It's our mandate and our mission to become a disciple of Christ. Not just a member of an organization or a group, but to become a true believer and a true follower of Christ, a disciple of God Almighty. Because you have to understand that you are called. But not only are you called, you are authorized. When you understand that you've been given authority, as you took your ordination oath, and you heard those words and you repeated the words. said, take now authority. Hallelujah. 
God was ordaining you in that moment. God was sharing with you in that moment that authority was now being given to you. But hallelujah, you say, well, I'm not ordained. You still have the authority. You still have the, the power because God is the one who's sending you. And when you understand what he goes on to say in the end of that seventh verse, he says, Give them, giving them authority to cast out evil spirits. He gave them authority. He gave them the power to be able to go in his name. When I understand that I wasn't just going in my own name. But I was going in the name of the one who called me. I was going in the name of the one called Jesus. The one who has all authority. The one who has power. The one who has a name that folk can run into it and get saved. The one who has a name that folk can just call out in the midnight hour. Call out Jesus and he'll come to their rescue. I'm talking about somebody whose name has all power in this world. I'm talking about somebody whose name has all authority because it's been given to him by God the Father. You understand the disciples were not just sent to operate in their own authority and own power, but they were sent as an extension of Jesus to operate in his authority and his power. So when you go, don't just think you're going on your own. Understand that whenever God gives you an assignment, whenever he sends you out on a mission, he's sending you in his name, in his power and authority. He's given you everything you need to be successful. He's given you everything you need. And yet challenges may come, but I got to remember, I've got the authority of Christ with me. I've got the power of Christ with me. And if I'm going in the name and the authority and the power of Jesus Christ, what shall I fear? I'm going in the greatest power that ever been given. I'm going in the name of Jesus Christ, the one who gives me the authority. He gave them the authority to cast out demons, to cast out evil spirits, to deal with anything and everything that came in an evil form. But it wasn't just there. But Matthew and Luke tell us that he also gave them the ability to heal the sick and to heal those who were going through. Our job is to be sent. It's job, God's job to empower us. It's God's job to give us the authority, but we've got to have the willingness to be sent. The willingness to go, to do what thus saith the Lord, to go in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't you understand that we've been given authority? I know it may seem scary, but you've been given the authority. I, I know you might think I'm not equipped with this, but you've been given the authority. I know you may say, I don't know what's down the road, but all you got to know is I've been given the authority that Jesus has shown up in my life and given me the authority that Jesus has given me the power to go in his name. And if I go in his power and I go in his authority, it may not work out the way that I think, but it's going to work out the way that God ordained it. It's going to move the way God has seen fit. It may get difficult along the way, but I'm walking in God's power. It may get challenging along the way, but I'm walking in God's power. And as long as I keep walking in his power, as long as I keep walking in his authority, as long as I keep walking in the grace of almighty God, I don't have to worry about a thing. We got to learn to be like Paul. Paul walked into some situations. Paul walked into some times when he was stoned to death. But guess what? He was operating in the authority and the power of Christ. And he got up and kept on ministering. He got up when they thought he was dead and he kept on ministering. Paul was shipwrecked more than twice and he kept on moving forward. He kept on going forward. Why? Because he understood I've been called and I've been sent by Christ. And because of that, I've got his power and his authority with me. That's when Paul came to the conclusion when they were talking about killing him. He says, if you kill me, I'm good. Because to die is to gain. But if I stay here, I can keep on ministering. So either way, I'm good. That's what happens when you're caught up in the authority and the power of Christ. And you understand that you've been called by him. When we get that straight and we understand that we've been called by a great God, when we've been called by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and we've been authorized to go out in his name. I've been authorized to share the goodness of Christ. I've been authorized to operate in the power of Almighty God. We need his power. We need his authority for, to fulfill the mission. And the reason that he sent them out two by two is so that there would be a testimony to Christ, a testimony to his power, and so that the testimony would be true. You needed two witnesses to make it true. 
And when we think about, well, you're not going by yourself. Hallelujah. You're going with Christ. You're going with the power of the Holy Spirit. And as long as you understand you're not by yourself, you've got a witness, the two that testify, Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They're testifying to God's goodness. They're testifying to God's power. All you got to do is keep walking in that power, keep walking in that authority. But see, Mark emphasized the fact that these disciples were sent to do battle with evil and to do battle with demonic possession. However, when you look at Matthew and Luke, they begin to tell us that there was also the reason to go out and heal those who were sick, to heal those who had all types of diseases and ailments. There's a sin-sick world that is out there. You're being sent forth to bring healing. There's a, a world that's out there that's filled with demonic oppression. You've been sent to set the captives free. We've been sent out into the world that we might do the work of Christ. We've been sent out into the world that we might be able to help someone to get freed from the shackles of sin. But how can we ever get them free from the shackles of sin if we refuse to go? How can we ever get them free from the sin that they've been caught up in if we refuse to go? Yield yourself to Christ and say, Lord, I'm willing to go. You got to learn to be like Isaiah. Lord, here am I. Send me. I'm not the best one, but Lord, I'm willing for you to send me. I may not be the brightest one, but Lord, send me. I might not be the prettiest or the most handsome one, but Lord, send me. All God is looking for is some yielded vessels who are willing to yield themselves to his power and his authority and go in his name to do the work that he's sending us to. Are you ready to go? Are you willing to go? Are you able to let God send you? Are you willing to get out of the way and allow God to send you wherever he desires to send you so that his work may be done? Are you ready to be sent into the world for the work of Jesus Christ. I hope that you are ready to go because there's a lot of folk out there that need your witness. There's some folk out there that need your healing power that God is working through you. But you got to be able to go. And the reason that you can go is because you have been called and because you have been authorized. It's time to move. But not only are you called, not only are you authorized, but you've also Got to understand that trust is key. Trust is key. If you notice in the text, it said that in verse 8 through 9, he told them to take nothing for their journey except a walking stick. No food, no traveler's bag, no money. He allowed them to wear sandals, but not to take a change of clothes. It sounds kind of harsh. You're sending me into a ministry opportunity, but you're telling me to take nothing for the journey. Now, most of us would say we need money. Most of us would say we need some supplies as we go. And then some will say, well, you're not even letting me take a change of clothes. God said, I got to get you to learn to trust me. Because there are going to come some times when lack will be there, but can you still trust me? There are going to be some times when difficulties will come, but can you still trust me? There are going to be some times when you come up against some evil spirits, when you're going to come up against some things that will challenge you, but can you still trust me? God wants to know, can you trust me when it looks bad? Can you trust me when it seems like hell is breaking loose all around you? Can you trust me? And Paul understood this, and Paul saw it in his ministry when Paul was trusting God in the midst of being stoned to death. Trusting God. We saw Stephen do it when he was being stoned to death. And as he began to say, Lord, forgive them. We saw it in the ministry of Jesus Christ as he hung on the cross at Calvary. They're being crucified between two criminals, but he's trusting God all the way. We've got to learn to trust God no matter what it looks like. We've got to learn to, to trust the Lord no matter where we think it's going to lead us. We've got to learn to trust God in the midst of it all. Have you been trusting the assignment that God has sent you on? How are you trusting him in that assignment? Some of us may not have an assignment to go and pastor, but are you trusting God in the assignment that he has put you on? Are you trusting God in the assignment to go out and share the good news? Are you trusting God in that assignment to go out and feed the hungry? Are you trusting God in that assignment, whatever it may be? Are you trusting God in that assignment? 
And understand, you got to trust the process and the one who sent you. If you don't trust the process, you'll fail. If you don't trust the one who sent you, you'll fail. And sometimes the process don't look like you want it to look. Sometimes the process don't feel like you want it to feel. But can you trust God in the midst of it all? When it don't feel like you want it to feel, can you keep trusting him? When it looks dark and you want to see sunshine, can you keep trusting him? When it seems like everything is going downhill, but God is saying, trust the process, can you keep trusting him? When it looks like everything is going to turn out a failure, can you keep trusting God? Because God says victory is on the horizon. All you got to do is keep trusting me. And if you keep trusting me, you'll make it to the destination. If you keep trusting me, you'll make it to the place of victory. If you keep trusting me, you'll come out on the other side victorious. All you got to do is keep trusting me. As the disciples went out two by two, they had to trust in the Lord. They didn't take anything with them, no money, no sandals, only one pair of sandals, one pair of clothes. And they had to trust God for their provision. And in fact, they couldn't even take but one cloak. And when you traveled back then, you took two cloaks. You had one that you wore as an outer garment, but at night you used one to cover you and to keep you warm. But notice Jesus told them they could only take one. He's going to have to be their provision in the midnight hour. He's going to have to be their, their comfort when things get difficult and rough. Jesus is going to be their all in all. Don't we understand that when Jesus becomes our all in all, we've got to trust him. In whatever place he sends us, we've got to trust him. Whatever ministry he puts in our hands, whatever assignment he gives us, we've got to trust him. The question is, are we trusting him? Are we trusting him in every way? Are we trusting him for everything? Are we trusting him that he will lead us in this life's journey? And when we trust him, his life that he leads us to, he'll lead us to the rewards in the time to come. When life is over in this world, because we trusted him in this world, he'll bless us in the next world, eternal life. I hope that's what we're living for. We're not just living down here to get a reputation or a name, but we're living for the kingdom of God. We're living that we might promote the kingdom of God. We're living that we might come to a place where we can stand before God himself and he'll say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's what we're living for, to live to the point that we give glory unto God. To the point that we give God all of the praise. That we come to the place, even as we are sent out in ministry, we are a blessing to the world. Because we're going in the name of God. Because we've been called by God. We're going out into the world because we've been authorized to go out into the world. And we're going out because we've been trusted by God. And we trust him to keep us through the midst of it all. As I close, I want to share with you. Uh, you know, I grew up in a time when, uh, you know, you can go to the store. Amen. As a child, amen, some of y'all know what I'm talking about. And you can buy cigarettes. Amen. Remember them times when the lady down the street would say, will you go down to the store for me? And you would go to the store for her. You've been sent out on assignment. And you go down there to the store and you would learn how to communicate so that you could get what you needed to get from the people at the store. And you would tell them you wanted a pack of cools. Hallelujah. And you tell them that you know, they smoked cools back then, amen. You get a pack of cools and they would hand them cools over to you as a child. And then you could take them cools back to the person and they would give you a little change, amen, for going to the store for them. They were learning the process of life. I, I began to think about that as I was growing up. I was being sent out on an assignment to go down the street to the store and, and pick up what they needed to have picked up. But one of the reasons that I was being sent is because of the relationship that I had with the people. Hallelujah. Some of them might have been your grandmama. You had one like mine. She dipped snuff. Amen. She put that little pinch of snuff in her lip. Hallelujah. And she always asked you to come and empty the can. Hallelujah. Amen. If you've ever been there before, you know what I'm talking about. But when you understand that you've been sent because of the relationship you had, it might have been grandmama, but it, it might have been a lady down the street that knew your grandmama, and because she knew grandmama, she trusted you. Hallelujah. And she would allow you to go to the store for her. And as you would go to the store, they would tell you what they needed. Now, I want you to bring me back this, and I want you to bring me back this. But one thing they would always tell you, make sure you get your right change. And you would go down to the store because they understood that they were sending you to the store. But the one thing they had to understand, that they could trust you. 
Hallelujah. Because if you ever went and didn't bring them back their right change, if you ever went and didn't bring them back what they wanted, you didn't go again. Hallelujah. I'm so glad that Jesus called us and he wants to send us out on an assignment. And he knows that the assignment is going to be successful because he's sending us and because we're trusting him. But I'm so grateful too that when they sent you to the store and you came back because of the relationship you had with them and because you fulfilled the assignment, they would give you a little reward at the end. Hallelujah. Oh, y'all I'm missing that thing because that's what's going to happen to us in the end we've been sent on assignment here in this world but as we go out on assignment here in this world as we operate in the power and the authority of Jesus Christ there's going to come a time because we trusted God there's going to come a time because we trusted him in all that we did that he's going to give us a reward for what we've done down here on this earth all because we have trusted the Lord all because we went out on the assignment that he has given us and because he did so because he blessed us so and because we trusted him along the way, we went to the store. We got what he asked us to get. We came back and brought back what he wanted us to bring back. He told us to go out and save souls. And we went out and shared the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. And we saved souls. He told us to go out and heal those that were sick and brokenhearted. We went out and healed them and brought back souls to his kingdom that were healed and mended. He told us to go out and, and help open up the blinded eyes. And that's what we did. We went out and helped someone to see the truth and to see the light. We told us to go out and help somebody's ears to be open. That's what we did. We went out and shared the gospel, the good news, and somebody's ears were open, and they were able to hear the good news of Jesus Christ. And all because we did that, we can now make sure that we are going to the kingdom of God because the reward is great for those who have done the work. The reward is great for those who have kept the faith. The reward is great for those who have walked by faith and not by sight. All because we did what the Lord had called us to do. There's a great reward waiting on us in heaven because one day we were sent in his name and one day we were sent in his authority and because we trusted him along the way, because we trusted him on this life's journey, he blesses us in the next life. When we get to glory, we're going forward before the Lord. He'll say, come on in. My good and faithful servant, come on in and receive your rest. But then we'll stand before the Lord as believers to be rewarded for what we did in this life. To be rewarded for the good works that we've done in this life. To be rewarded for the, the souls that were brought into the kingdom. We will receive the crowns of life. We will receive the reward that is stored for us in heaven. Because we trusted God down here. Are you ready to be sent? Are you ready to be sent? God is willing to send you. But you got to know that you're called. You got to know that you're authorized. And trust is key. Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. We pray that this message was a blessing to you. If it was, drop us an email at wesleyonmain at yahoo.com. That's wesleyonmain at yahoo.com to let us know how this message has touched your life. Until next time, God bless.